Hello everybody, this is Yasmin from YarkSpiryFantasyArt.com and welcome to another illustration video tutorial. In this week's tutorial, I'm actually drawing the Hound of Tindalos and I did do quite a bit of research in order to get a general idea of how to actually draw this character. Uh, so the first thing I did is I actually looked up on Wikipedia uh, what the definition was and what would influence uh, my design for this character. So as I was researching this, I found out um, that this creature actually is part of or dwells within um, time. So he's able to move within different portions, essentially, of the universe and time, and normally actually hunts people that try to time travel. They're also apparently believed to be immortal, which is quite interesting. And they really like, uh, for some reason, uh, they like feeding off anything that's living. Uh, so there was quite a few interesting things for me to work with. And just that general idea gave me quite a few ideas and inspirations. Uh, but the most interesting part was that uh, even though it's called the Hound of Tindalos, apparently the actual uh, creature is not canine in nature, it's actually more bat-like. Uh, so taking this information, I had to modify my initial idea, which I was obviously going to draw a hound-like creature, to a more uh, reptilian bat-like creature. Uh, now, this one also had uh, uses a hollow tongue to actually feed off the essence of living creatures and humans. So, it was also another focal point that I wanted to include in this concept for this character. So as you can see as I'm actually sketching this out, I've already sketched out the bat wings and I've actually hinted at an elongated tongue. The reason why I did this is obviously because I want to show that um, this creature really is bloodthirsty so he's going to have his mouth dripping with saliva and I want to have, I want to show that that tongue is not a normal tongue as well. So near the end of this drawing you actually see me add some small spikes and add those portions to really give that character that hunger look. Now one of the problems that this character did present however is how do you show a creature that is traveling through time? What is time? Uh, essentially we see the results of time but we don't necessarily see what time looks like. It's more of a mathematical thing for us and that's something we've learned how to measure as far as I know. Now if you look at space and time however when an object is moving extremely quickly it actually causes uh, the surrounding air to actually warp and displace. So taking that into account um, I did want to show the fact that it's able to move within this area. So near the end of this video, you're going to actually see me add some random colors, literally the colors of the rainbow, but I diffuse most of it so you barely see it. Um, but that's essentially supposed to simulate the fact that this creature is actually part of time itself, so it's able to move essentially at the speed of light. And because of that, colors are distorted but it's able to essentially interweave itself into little holes or pockets of time and come out of that in order to actually be able to prey off humans. So you're going to actually see this creature actually coming out of essentially a portal um, in order to actually feed off of or go back into its world. And it uses these por portals essentially to move around in the universe and in time. So that was the general idea behind this character. There's a lot of complex elements, but an extremely uh, valuable piece to work on and a very entertaining one because I was able to really push my limits um, as, a, as an artist uh, to see how far I could take this character design and what would influence the general uh, layout of the character. Now, furthermore, uh, on Wikipedia, there's actually a illustration of the Hound of Tindalos and I took this also as a, a general reference. Now, this character is more bone-like in nature, but it, it seems to have a triangle-type portal. And for me, that I actually understood it as being a portal, so I wanted to include it. Uh, 
uh, organic creatures such as humans and like plants and all that uh, descend from curves, uh, whereas what does this creature descend from? Um, so that's very odd as an interpretation and as a definition. But it also brings to the fact that maybe this character, instead of actually um, dwelling in a, a, a curvy nature or something, it actually has to move through um, hard edge areas, and that's where those pores are essentially. Uh, from a physics point of view, it doesn't really make sense, but this creature is based off a um, literary book, I believe. It's actually... Um, this creature is actually part of the uh, Cthulhu mythos, so in that sense, it won't necessarily have any relevance to uh, actual physics, but it's still interesting to take some of those elements and try to include it as well. Now, uh, I did want to show a light source, so because I did want to show this creature coming out of one portal and moving into another one. Um, I do have the light source actually a different color as well, because it's a different location in the universe, and for that reason, it didn't have to be the same color as the portal that he was just coming out of. This uh, light source also added an additional feature in that it allowed me to really showcase the details of his front and make him pop out from the background to keep him from blending in. Uh, so I did use that uh, for just in particular lighting purposes, but once again it was all part of that story and how I'm actually trying to figure out the character. Now what I'm actually adding right now um, is I'm actually adding some of that rim light behind the character that's coming out from the portal behind him. Uh, and I'm adding that into various areas that would actually be lit from that uh, to make sure that everything fits. All the while trying not to overdo the details. So what I'll often do is I'll add some detail and then tone back the rest of the detail to make sure I'm not over adding detail. And this is very important because it's very easy at any stage to add too much detail or to get too carried away in the overall detail so that it no longer makes sense structurally as well. So I'm just adding now because uh, that rib cage area, and that stomach area is not the main focal point. The main focal point is the facial area. I'm making sure not to add as much detail in that area but you would still see some light being cast onto the leg, so I do have to bring that leg up forward a bit more uh, just to make sure it shows and reads correctly. And what you just saw me do is I actually softened out certain portions of the character so that it basically blends into the background so that you're not overly uh, concentrated into that area. And I'm bringing forward and toning back uh, different areas of the neck to make sure that I do have just enough detail showing um, but not too too much because I still want to show the proper structure of the neck and the head. Now because this character is flying and he's not actually flying in um, an actual area that uh, essentially has actual matter, um, I'm not overly concerned about the background so much as the character. The character is obviously the focal point in this. Uh, so because of that, I really did want to work on adding additional details to the character uh, to make sure that um, the character really showcased that detail that I was trying to aim for. Just working on the foot right now. And because the foot is further back, I don't want to add too much information, so I actually tone back parts of the tail and the foot at the same time, uh, just to bring that back further back in the distance. Now, generally speaking, as objects recede, they tend to take on a slightly faded and bluish tint to them. So I'm using this knowledge to actually tone back areas and bring them further into the distance. It's a very easy way of doing that. 
uh, to cause certain areas to recede more, uh, but it makes a huge difference on the overall painting at the end. Just working on the tongue right now. Now this entire drawing was actually very short. It only took about four hours to do this entire illustration. Uh, so this was actually one of the shorter drawings I've worked on in quite a while. Uh, there wasn't very many complicated elements because so much of it was actually receding that I didn't actually have to fully detail those portions out. Um, the main focus was the face, so I just need to add extra detail into those areas. And everything else uh, just had to draw you towards the face. So keeping that in mind, this drawing actually didn't take very long at all. So I just added a uh, color layer to the front of the character just to bring out the yellows a bit more because there wasn't enough light uh, justifying the, the hard rim of light around the character. So I just made sure to add that in. I'm just working on the wing, the further wing right now. And I'm really working at just including enough detail so that it reads as being a wing receding backwards um, while uh, still fading out and not being too detailed. Working out areas of the eye and the hip. Just tweaking some of the lighting a bit more. Now the arm already has quite a bit of information there. Uh, so you'll see me very shortly begin to add uh, some additional detail into the actual wing because it's the only area that doesn't have virtually any detail uh, so it doesn't seem to actually fit and be part of this creature. So it is important that I tie in everything for this so I have to go in and actually add a little bit more detail to that wing structure uh, just to make it look more believable. Now I'm just adding the portal area. Uh, once again, uh, because the description says that it doesn't dwell within curves unlike humans, um, I wanted to make the portal look almost uh, very rigid in shape as well. And the portal is actually two-dimensional. It is not a 3D object. It's uh, essentially a two-dimensional shape. And that was done on purpose because I essentially want to have this character be a three-dimensional while as the portal is essentially, because it's on the bridge between essentially two worlds, I wanted to have essentially a different aspect to it. Now I'm adding that back leg right in now. And it's just finding a good compromise between just having enough detail to show that it's a leg um, while also not adding too, too much information as well. So I'm just fading out certain areas. I just added a bit more yellow once again because I have to justify um, that color that's coming into the image. And I'm just darkening up some additional areas of both the body and the corners. So this helps draw your attention further to the character. I'm just adding some of the saliva on his mouth because this creature is extremely hungry, hasn't eaten in a while. If you want to have your say on what's drawn for next week's video tutorial or have some additional questions about my drawing process, please leave a comment below. I will take the feedback you guys give me and try to answer your questions while working on next week's painting. If you want to see some of my previous works, please feel free to check out the annotations on the side of this video or visit my channel for the full playlist. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you and take care.